What a phenomenal size. This 6.1 inch flagship is a perfect power pack smartphone you can own. As soon as I held it, it felt so refreshing and reminded me why this form factor feels so freaking good. This is a very natural size. I'd almost forgotten what it felt like to use a phone with just one hand. Nowadays, I can't even take a photo without holding the phone in two hands. And given how much we use our smartphones through the day, small phones are just more practical. Everything is easier. Navigating on your phone, typing messages, storing it in your pocket, and even mentally you're more relaxed because it's not as easy for this phone to slip out of your hands like big phones generally do. You just have a better grip and I think mentally just more carefree. Also, this time around, they've made the phone feel a lot more rectangular. It's absolutely flat at the top and the thickness is slightly more than previous year's models. That actually makes this feel a lot better. There's a bit of heft to it, which feels nicer and just gives a much better grip in your hand. The white color is probably one of the safest colors you can get because even with minor scratches or scuffs, they won't really show as much on the white color as they would on, let's say, a darker color. So choose your color wisely. And while this is gloss, it has this matte, frosty finish and you can tell by this sound, it's not your usual glossy gloss. This does help reduce fingerprints for sure. With the phone, you only get the USB Type-C cable and the ejection pin, nothing else. And also right out of the box, you do not get any pre-applied screen protector, you don't get any protective casing, and there are no earphones in the box, no charger as well. So just a few things you need to get for yourself as soon as you get the phone. Okay, now the small size does mean less screen estate and smaller battery capacity, but do note that there is no sacrifice on power. The processing chip is still the same as in the S22 Ultra. And while you get only eight gigs of RAM, there is the option to add VRAM in device settings and increase the effective RAM utilization. But seriously, it's a very fast phone and it is powered by the most powerful chip that there is right now to power any Android smartphone. By the way, there is no microSD card slot, so you cannot expand storage by putting in a microSD card. So just do yourself a favor and only get the 256 gigs variant if you plan on using this phone for more than a year or two. Okay, so the display. All cutting edge stuff. Dynamic AMOLED, 120Hz adaptive refresh rate, super color reproduction, 240Hz touch sampling for improved responsiveness, especially while gaming, and a peak brightness of 1300 nits. It's a crazy good display, and it's actually almost as good as the Galaxy S22 Ultra's display. Now, I know the S22 Ultra peaks at 1750 nits, and it's got Vision Booster, but very honestly, the perceivable difference in brightness output on the S22 is not a whole lot different from the S22 Ultra. Actually, let me put it this way. This is undoubtedly, hands down, the best display you can get in this size. And whether you game on it or watch videos, except for the fact it's not a big display, but because it's bright and colorful, you get a great visual experience. And this has stereo speakers, so both the earpiece and the speaker grill here. They both output sound, so it's pretty loud. And fun fact, I found the speaker volume and output at par with that of the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which is a much bigger phone. That's pretty good. Quickly on the software side, you get Android 12, One UI 4.1, slightly better than One UI 4.0. You get all cutting edge flagship features like more personalization, wireless text, link to Windows, extra dim, better processing speeds. You get Bixby routine, secure folder. You also get the option to download and install good lock modules, which allow customizing your experience to a whole other level. The entire experience is very, very fluid. Now, one of the more important things about software is that Samsung said it's going to give you four years of Android upgrades and five years of security patches. That's great, which means if you're getting this with Android 12, you're sure to get all the way up to Android 16 or your Galaxy S22 and the S22 Plus and the S22 Ultra. And that's great. And now the most exciting part for most people, the cameras. So here are the specs for you. But just to give you a very high level opinion of this camera system, it is one of the best that you can get on Android phones today. The camera hardware is top notch and combine that with Samsung's processing algorithms, you get really good photos. If you must compare, the Galaxy S22 Ultra additionally has a 10x telephoto lens as well as it has autofocusing capabilities in its ultra wide lens. And those are the only two things that are really missing on the base S22. In terms of video, the S22 Plus and the Ultra can shoot up to 8K at 24fps and 4K up to 60fps. And now to give you a flavor, here are a few samples that I took. On the left, you've got primary lens photos and on the right side, you've got ultra wide. No surprises, the primary lens photos are slightly brighter than the ultra wide lens. 
but both the lenses are doing a phenomenal job. I mean, these photos are so good, they're so sharp, and I'm gonna leave a link in the description so you can actually download these photos and evaluate the quality for yourself. Now, here's a quick zoom test that I took, and you know, this is 3X, so you can see the text is very clearly readable, even at 10X, it's really good. This is 20X, and now we go to 30x and guys this is really usable and now moving on to portrait photos these are the ones i took using you know the front camera and they are amazing so samsung talked about stereo depth mapping something that they've used to really enhance the accuracy of portrait shots now this one is using the rare camera in the portrait mode and again these look really good just look at the separation between the background and the foreground it's amazing so yeah, you know, whatever Samsung's done with stereo depth mapping and all that AI processing, I think it's looking really good. And here are some indoor shots that I took inside a mall and the lighting was just about decent. It wasn't very brightly lit as you can see, but the photos did come out really well in my opinion. They're really nice and bright. Uh, the details are captured pretty well. And again, all of these are available for you to download so you can check it out all by yourself. Now here are some low light shots that I took at around 9 p.m. in the night. And again, I'm just, pretty blown away by the quality and the detail captured even in such low lighting conditions. And all of this is shot in automatic mode. I haven't made any changes or treated the photos at all. Also, when it's very low, the phone will give you the option to switch to night mode and that definitely brightens up the photos a bit, but you do have the option to not use it if you want naturally dark photos. So it's completely up to you. So I've already shared photo samples using the front facing camera and now this is a video sample. It's shot in 4K at 30 FPS and I'm not using any external stabilizer or gimbal. This is, you know, just right in my hands and I'm feeding my voice right into the built-in microphone. So no external microphones either. I'm at the park. It's actually quite over here. So not the perfect test, but, you know, hopefully if it was windy, which I can't create, uh, it would be a better test for sure. So yeah, this is the 4K video sample. And here's a 4K video footage using the primary lens of the rear camera. And one of the things I really like is how it focuses on the right object uh, when you point at it. So it's really quick, it's very soft. And I know for a fact that many cameras struggle with that. And there's a lot of variation in terms of lighting. You know, suddenly the footage will go very dark or it will go very uh, bright, but that's not happening in this case. You know, if I point towards the camera, you can see how nicely it adapts to the changes in light. Okay, now let's touch upon the battery life. And honestly, I've just taken this out two days ago, so I really haven't used it as much as I should have to properly comment on you know, the battery performance. But I can understand the concerns. It's a 3700 milliampere hour battery capacity, which doesn't sound a lot. And if you compare it to the S22 Plus or the Ultra, it seems even smaller. But think about it, those devices have larger screens and this has a much smaller screen. So the battery requirement of this phone is not as high as it would be in the case of S22 Plus and the Ultra. So you can expect some level of balance and optimization, but if you're someone who you know uses their phone a lot for watching TV shows and movies or gaming for a big part of their day, you're probably going to find yourself charging this way too often. And if you're someone who's on the move a lot, you commute a lot, and you don't get as many opportunities to charge your phone, unless you're okay carrying a power bank, you may be better off by getting the S22 Plus at the very least, because it's got, you know, more battery life that you can hang on to than the S22 base version. So to conclude, I started to admire the phone as soon as I took it out. The feel of the phone in the hand, the form factor, it's just brilliant. And very high performance is usually associated to big size phones, but the feeling of just having a really powerful phone with brilliant camera optics in such a small size feels more futuristic to me. Of course, it doesn't mean it's for everyone. If you're really tall, you've got big hands, or you binge watch TV shows, movies, or you game a lot, a phone with a bigger battery capacity is definitely going to serve you better. But if your everyday phone use consists of calling, communication, social media, chatting, reading stuff, browsing the web, I cannot think of a better phone than the Galaxy S22 right now. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm so torn between using the S22 Ultra as my daily driver and this one. I mean, I really just wished that the S22 also had the option of S Pen because I really use the S Pen quite a bit and that's what's really pushing me towards the Ultra. But if this had the S Pen in it, 
I would opt for the S22 over the S22 Ultra in a heartbeat. Because you know, the camera on the S22 is really good. I know the S22 Ultra has a slightly better camera, but those additional features in the S22 Ultra will be very seldom used by me personally. So for me, this is good enough. And it's 6.1 inch display, which is really good. Uh, it's a bigger display on the Ultra, but for me, this is good enough to be very honest. Yeah, it's got 1300 nits of peak brightness as compared to S22 Ultra's 1750 nits. But the perceivable difference is really not that much. So this is a really bright screen. I mean, outdoors, no issue whatsoever. And uh, yeah, it's got the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It's a really powerful chip, the same in S22 Ultra. So performance is not going to be an issue. And uh, yeah, the form factor is something I just can't get over. Just holding this phone makes me not want to keep it down. I'm not kidding, it's really that good. The only thing is the S Pen, which is missing on the S22, and that could be the only reason why I still stick to the S22 Ultra, but this is really good. All right, that's it on the S22 first impressions. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments section. Do follow me on Instagram because I'll keep posting stuff as I use the S22 more and more. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching guys. And if you did enjoy watching the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon, mark all. That would mean a lot to me. It shows your support for the channel and me. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.